All right. Hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is, uh, I was going to say September. It is October 17th, 2021, and I'm back. Yes, I'm back. I could still feel a little bit of, of faintness and weakness in my body, uh, but for the most part, I am back and I am ready. Um, it, uh, <clears throat> it was... It was a two weeks of butt kicking. Um, my my daughter's about the same place where I am, uh, just about the same as me. And my wife is unfortunately still in bed. Uh, she's taken the, the brunt of it. And right now she's just really weak. You know, we may have had COVID. Uh, our son went to, uh, for those that are wondering, you know, it's... Uh, it's two weeks today since the last video, and I'm sure glad I did that last video when I did, even though uh, I was feeling it like crazy and my voice was going and it was hurting. Um, but I'm so happy I got that last video done. Um, and the funny thing about that video, I've taken more flack for that video than I did even for this one, the again video. Can you imagine that? I've taken more heat because of what I said here than the video about again for Christ. I mean, <laughs> that's how crazy it is. I was on the phone. Uh, um, I did a, a Zoom uh, FaceTime with uh, Ivan yesterday, and we were on for a couple hours, and you know he got a chuckle out of that too. And and uh, you know, but you know, he's like, well, that's because the again doesn't affect the people. You know, it doesn't affect us now. We're talking about something ten and a half years from now. But this video is something that affects people now, right? We want to go now. We want to go now. Everything is looking and was looking like it was connected to tabernacles. <coughs> and it came and went. And now everybody's talking second tabernacles. And they're going through the whole thing as if the, the month off. And I know that everybody's watching like crazy because we're right here as I'm talking to you now, the 17th of October, 2021. And so I understand everybody's excitement for here. I understand nobody, or I shouldn't say nobody, but many just, they just don't want to hear it when we're saying that it's going to be at uh, Hanukkah. Um, but we're going to go through a few more of those things today. Um, I'm not, when I was with, uh, Ivan yesterday, we were chatting for a couple hours. We were talking about these things here, uh, about it being one month off and, and the, the way it could possibly play out and how numbers might equal. Um, but as you guys know, man, I'm for yesterday. I'm for right now. Don't let me finish the video. Lord, boom, let's make it now. All right. Of course. But I, I'm not going to shy away either. if. I've come to understand more, I'm going to share it. The, you know, and, and that's why I was saying even in the last video, there's, there's no need to be upset by it. But when this time comes and goes uh, this coming week, we, we don't have to be upset. We don't have to be bummed. We, we've shown now that it's Hanukkah. Christ's birth is at Hanukkah. The connection we were looking for was a connection to his birth, was a connection to the eighth day. Um, there were only two eight days in all of Scripture. One was Tabernacles. The other was Second Tabernacles called Hanukkah. <clears throat> so we can, we can rejoice and be excited knowing that if, if or when this time passes in the next few days, we can still be excited. We can look around in the world. You see, that's another thing too, guys. You know, before I get a little too sidetracked, that's another thing too. All we got to do is look around the world. I mean, you guys remember this video. I mean, this video was from 2010, and I got that video on the day that the Lord confirmed that it was 50, 14, 50. We know that it's a 50-day count. It's an escape, a 50-day count. Then the 14 years, and then the final 50th Jubilee. I mean, a video from 10 years ago telling us about the China catch a cold and the whole world, it will spread to the West and it'll be a pandemic and the, it'll, it'll start to bring about uh, 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 the, the world order, the, the uh, uh, lockdowns and everything around the world. I mean, Obviously, the guy that this that he met with 
was in the room with the people that are responsible for what so many hundreds of millions of us, and I include myself probably, having had COVID. You see, guys, this it's things like this. Remind ourselves of this video, look around the world, but it now we're at the point where it's the it's it's a little bit of the the impatience, of course, because we've been we've been watching for a while now and, and intensely watching. Many have been watching for decades, right? For decades. In this ministry, it's been four years, but it's been a very intense four years because the books have been opening to us. We have the revelation of the Gospels. We have the revelation of the 14 years. That means we're in a time frame right now. That's the end of the line. <laughs> there's just, there, there's, no, there's no getting around it. There's no going to next year. There's no going to three years from now, five years from, it, it's not even an option. Biblically, it's not an option. And we have proven these things out and built on these things, video after video after video after video. And as you guys all know, the, the number one mystery, now not the number one key, that was the revelation of the Gospels. You know, when the Gospels have revealed themselves to us as to who they're speaking to. The second key was the 14 years. And anybody who's new to this ministry, this is what we're talking about right here. You, you must... I don't know why a commercial pops up. I don't have commercials on my channel, but I think uh, YouTube just automatically does it sometimes. So what it is, is the uh, intro video right here. The Revealed End Time Study Note Series. Okay, these are the two keys right here. You need to start with understanding who the Gospels are speaking to. It's been revealed here in this ministry. And that'll reveal to you that the end of days isn't one set of seven years, but two sets of seven years. And what had happened is because all of our lives, you'll find out in the third video, is because of all of our lives, we've been taught from the foundation of Matthew's gospel, very little interest in Mark and even less in Luke, that what's happened is we've missed what Luke's discourse was. We've missed the purpose of Mark's discourse. There's a reason why their wordings are different. All right. And the difference is, in the end, it goes Luke, Mark, and Matthew. We've missed the entire first half of tribulation. Now, the great news about it for anybody that's new, you're going to find out that pre-trib escape of the bride of Christ, that the mid-trib rapture great multitude, and that the return feet down of the Lord at the end are all three of them true. And these are things that we can have great rejoicing, great hope in, is in understanding that all three of them are true and this intro series will bring this all to light for you not only the intro series you can go to the ministryrevealed.com website and you could download the free pdf book or you can and or you can get the paperback over on uh, amazon okay Here's uh, from the book, 287 pages in the download, in the PDF. And uh, really begin to understand what these two important keys are that have opened everything to us. But besides those keys, the other important thing that the entire church eschatology the entire church that that watches and has been waiting forever has been trying to understand the 70 years and again i was talking with this a little bit with ivan yesterday see it there's a reason why the churches don't talk about the 70th anymore they just have not understood it and for the longest time we didn't either you know, from 2017 into 18, and then we were like, Lord, and then we got past a certain point from Zechariah 7, and we're like, Lord, what the heck is going on? And then 2018 and uh, 19 comes, and then there's panic in 19 because we thought maybe this additional year, and they, they didn't count from that additional year from when they had a land, the land, the people, and the government, and that sustained us a little bit further. And then in 2019, in the fall of 2019, the Lord gave me that, dropped it into my spirit. As you guys all know, 
that the the revelation was that the lord was coming after 13 years and would fulfill the 14th year and all of a sudden all these scriptures that we were teaching on the 14 years all of them started to make sense because we realized that in each one of them the final 14th year the lord was here there was already something happening in that final year and so that brought us a little bit further and we were able to say oh okay we can still go a little bit further we can understand that the the 14 years yes it's 14 but it's 13 to the lord's return and when he fulfills that final 14th year then it'll be the 6000 and first year and the beginning of the jubilee that final jubilee you see we've got it mapped out <clears throat> on this chart here as well this is the as, as you guys all know this is our open books there's the what we call the seven easy years like jacob did for expecting rachel but got leah then you've got the seven years of seals then you've got the seven years of trumpets but the lord returns at the end of the 13th year and will be here to fulfill the 14th year and destroy all those who came against jerusalem we're going to talk a little bit about this today because um not only are we going to get into uh, um this season and time that we're in right now i mean yes of course we're, we we can be bummed as as certain dates may pass but we know we're at the tail end of it you know that that's part of the opening thing i was saying all we got to do is look around you know we we understand where we're at there's no there, there's no panic in this ministry to say oh it's just never going to happen is it is it really real is it really true is it pre is it mid is it post are all three of them true yes 100 percent, yes you see when the lord returns it'll be the end of 2033 2034. you see nothing is going to be out of place nothing has changed on our charts for these years you can understand that when the lord returns that is when he returns to come and tabernacle with we're going to touch on that in a moment and all of this has to also though be connected to a 70 years you see isn't isn't it crazy that somehow it has to be connected to 70 even though 70 was like three years ago and yet at the same time it must equal when it's over at the lord's return 2000 years from when christ is death and resurrection we've, we've covered some of these things in the past of course but it's something that that people outside of this ministry they they don't they don't get into very often or at all because it's very hard to do if you only have a seven year uh, a, a seven year understanding of end times you see and it's not that we're knocking you we don't knock it at all we're trying to reveal the truth of the 14 years to the world to the best of our ability and and when you see it there there's just no unseeing it but there's been a there, there's always been this issue for the last while until about the past year a little maybe the last 10 months or so and that is what we've been talking about here lately uh, uh in fact we've been talking about it for a while but in particular lately which is the whole psalms 90 and 10. all right uh, sorry sorry not 90 and 10 uh leviticus 19 verse 23 and 24. this right here this piece of scripture right here is the mystery that we've been looking for that we've understood to an extent for the last 10 months but that the whole world of eschatology who's been trying to track the 70 years but has set it off to the side and and never talking about it again is because of this piece of scripture right here you see it's 70 years however there's a crystal clear piece of scripture that tells us when you come into the land this is this is such a key phrase for us right here when you come into the land so the lord's saying when you come into the land that i give you and you're going to be planting all manner of trees for fruit and for fruit it's uncircumcised you can't take it for three years okay it's going to be uncircumcised to you and you shall not eat of it 
And so this is where we've been for the for the last, you know, 10 months or so. We finally understood that Israel is what? 73. We understood that it's three years. Then the 70 years begin. But as these feasts, as these times this year, in this what we're calling 70th year, because it is, what has happened is we're saying, well, wait a second. It's either got to be on the Hebrew calendar or it's maybe on the sun, moon, and stars being a one month off calendar. As you guys all know, I made the decision about a year ago to stop bouncing from calendar to calendar and made the decision based on the educated decision, I'll call it, of the Hebrew calendar to stick with the Hebrew calendar. And when these dates and all these fall feasts have come and gone, we were left scratching our head. And now for those that watch the sun, moon and stars, so far people are scratching their head, but now they're waiting for that for later this week to see if it'll be the quote unquote sun moon and stars feast of tabernacles now when if or when this comes to pass for their feast of tabernacles everybody would be left oops everybody would still be left scratching their head except now we've got greater clarity you see it's this three years. We, we've been screaming this for a long time now. How could we be at the end of all of these feasts? <coughs> Excuse me, be at the end of all of these feasts. And, and again, remember, my focus is, is the Hebrew calendar perspective. How could we have gone through all of these times of the feasts and yet nothing have happened? Something is up, right? Well, we came to then realize that hold on a second in the last video as we were digging and digging even in the last couple videos we came to realize that hold on it's not just that it's the end of the three years it's that at the four-year anniversary is when this grouping of of first fruits is brought to the lord and i'm not going to go into it all you guys had two weeks to watch the last video so i know you guys will get it okay well, this being brought to the Lord and, and this time of praise, a celebration of thanksgiving for harvest, this entire piece of scripture is directly connected 100% in Leviticus chapter 19 and all of the trees is directly connected to Tuba Shavat, the 15th of Shavat, which is called the new year of trees. And it made so much sense because it was all about all the trees. Now, when you when we did this and we said, well, 1948 in May, well, it's counted just like the House of Israel counts. <clears throat> Any time in that year from, from May 14th, 1948, until the the day before Tuba Shavat of 1949, any tree that was planted, any fruit tree planted, any of it, as soon as it hits Tuba Shavat of 1949, all of those plants, all of those trees planted are called one year old now. And on Tuba Shavat, bang, they all start their second year. And get to the end of 1950, boom, two years is now complete. 51 three years is now complete but you see that 50 years is sorry uh 51 is now three years complete well that's the three years but it's not holy to the lord until the fourth that would have been 52. so the 70 years puts us in the 70 right now and it completes this entire process right here to Beshavat of 2022. You see, it's over. There, there's no 75. You know, when you read the story, for those that say, well, wait a second, it does talk about the fifth year. The fifth year was for them to say that now at the fourth year, it was holy to bring to the Lord. It was now his. Okay. The fifth year was now the food that they could eat. Okay. That's what it was about. 
the key was the three years and the four years. The fifth year was for them literally in being able to eat the food and so forth. It is not part of the end time understanding and them having food and so forth because we know that this is where the scarcity portion comes in. We know this is where the famine and everything's coming in. Okay, This was to establish how the Lord was determining the 70 year count. And now we got it. And now we got it. That's why we're saying it can't go the next year. It can't go the year after that. The whole 13, 14 years, it ends at that time of 2034. 34 into 35 is that final, what is it, that Jubilee portion. Okay? Or 34 into 35, that year that the Lord is here. And when it's over, then it becomes the final Jubilee. I'm just, I'm really trying to emphasize for you guys and let you guys know that be strong, be, be, be of good cheer. I don't know why I have these extra things, but <clears throat> maybe they did an update. Anyways, but be of good cheer and be excited. Because the worst case scenario of where we're looking at is right here. Okay? Is Hanukkah. Now, let me let me get into to some of these portions that we've spoken about in the past, because. Remember, Hanukkah, a lot of people, this is where a lot of people have issue. And like I said, I had issue with these things before as well. And of course, the issue is, how is it that, you know, every, everything was leaning to to Christ being born at Tabernacles <clears throat> and not at Hanukkah? And we know it's the Hanukkah, the festival of lights. We've gone through it. We spoke about it in the last video as well. And what some, where some people have a hard time is not understanding Luke chapter 1, 2, 3, 4 is in order. It has to do with the escape of the bride of Christ, the Lord coming for his 40 days, um, the Lord coming at the end of seals, and the Lord coming at the end of trumpets. We've spoken about it many times. And we've even spoken about how the 40 days of, of Jonah is what the Lord's going to be doing. The 40 days of the ark is the craziness the earth is going to be in. And the 40 days related to his birth is going to be the time that he's here and when he begins. This is what it's all about. The importance of this for us of Luke chapter 2 <laughs> and the whole thing of Luke being in order is that this portion for Luke isn't just another 40 days. It's the 40 days to tell us when the 40 days will begin. And that's why even in the, in the second last video, and then there was one, is because there was only two eight-day celebrations in all of Scripture. One, of course, is, is Tabernacles, and the other is Hanukkah. You see, it's, it's not a mystery. We've spoken about these things. Here's another little piece to, to help solidify for some people. Uh, Yeshua himself took part in Hanukkah. Um, as a historical footnote, the eight days of Hanukkah arose from the eight days of the Feast of Tabernacles. The Jewish people in, in uh, 165 B.C., had not been able to observe the latter because the Syrian Greeks were still in control of Jerusalem. So once the temple was dedicated, they continued to observe the eight days of the Feast of Tabernacles three months later than customary as Hanukkah. From that came the concept of the eight days of Hanukkah. All right? And... <clears throat> So it's not a mystery. We know that Hanukkah is another type of tabernacles. And if the one tabernacles has passed, I understand why people want to say, well, it's one month off because of the time of Christ and we follow the procession of the sun and the moon. I, I get that. But I just don't understand how nobody is following that on earth except a few people when when everything is related to the Jews, when they do this in the fifth month and in the seventh month and, and so forth, 
Well, wouldn't they have to be observing it on their actual fifth month and seventh month? Otherwise, the, there'd be nothing for them to really point to because nobody's doing these things one month off. And that's one of the main reasons that I stopped also jumping to the sun, moon, and stars calendar. I hope, I've said it before, I hope and pray it is because this would be the week. But I'm cautious that I'm cautious because of what we now have been revealed. Do you see the story of what I'm telling you and what I've been sharing in the last two videos about this story of Hanukkah does not change our story of tabernacles. It's just another tabernacles. Just like it says, it's another feast of tabernacles. So everything we had considered, everything we were looking at that was at the feast of tabernacles, we are still looking at the feast, but we're looking at Hanukkah as that feast of tabernacles. You see, we're going to get into a little bit of this tabernacle stuff here in a moment as well. And then we're going to end as uh, later on going into Joel. The book of Joel, I told you guys we would get into that. And you'll see, finally, we can see Joel in order. <coughs> and um, so let me, let me get going and show you some of this right now and what I'm talking about. First of all, a lot of people say, well, Hanukkah isn't in the Old Testament, right? There is no Hanukkah in the Old Testament. Well, let me show you something. Some of you guys may know this. Others may not. But in Numbers chapter 7, what had happened was, it says, And it came to pass in the day that Moses had set up the tabernacle, okay, and had anointed it and sanctified it. Okay, so what had happened? The, the temple was built. Now it was the time of the tabernacle. They had anointed it. They had established it. Now it was, it was being prepared and ready, right? And it said that the 12 princes of Israel, the heads of the houses of their fathers, who were the princes of the tribes and were over them that were numbered, offered. And it goes on to talk about what they offered. It says in verse 10, and the princes offered for dedication of the altar in the day that it was anointed. Do you understand what's going on here? <coughs> the, 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 the Hanukkah was an anointing, was a re-anointing, if you will, of, see, a rededication of this tabernacle. So when it had been destroyed and it was being attacked, as we know, by the Syrian Greeks and what had happened for six years, they had come against it. Once the Maccabees revolt, we all know that story. They ended up rebuilding. Uh, 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 most of the temple was there. And then they established the altar, the tabernacle. They set up the tabernacle. And once that tabernacle was established, they rededicated everything. Hence, the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay? So, when we go back in Numbers chapter 7, you actually end up, if you uh, keep reading in some of this, you find out that um, one of the readings they do at Tabernacle, uh, uh, sorry, at Hanukkah, where the heck is it? One of the readings they do at Hanukkah is from Numbers chapter 7. Well, when you go into Numbers chapter 7, if if you didn't know any better, if, if I didn't say it was it was all the way back in Numbers and I was reading through this, you might even think that it was actually Hanukkah taking place. Okay? Because the altar has been anointed. The altar is being dedicated. It's now ready to start receiving these sacrifices. Well, that's exactly what Hanukkah was. Well, when we go into this and you see in, in chapter 7, number 7, verse 10, the word dedication that's taking place of everything that they're bringing to dedicate the altar is, of course, Hanukkah. <clears throat> so for people to say that there, there wasn't any 
quote unquote Hanukkah, oh, there might not have been this eighth day story of Hanukkah, but there was clearly a Hanukkah dedication of the altar that had been anointed that that took place. And as you read through it, you can clearly see just like Hanukkah, it comes from the core word, which is to narrow, to dedicate, to train up. And this word we all know comes from somebody where you are all eagerly praying to be like, and that is Enoch. Enoch initiated, see, his name comes from the same root word as the one for dedication. And as we know from Hebrews chapter 11, that's exactly who we're praying to be like, to be found accounted worthy to escape all these things, right? To, to, to have been translated as Enoch was translated because he had faith that God said he, that God was who he said he was and that he was diligently seeking him, God vanished him. And we want to be like him. And his name is connected to Hanukkah. I mean, as you go through it, you see it's Hanukkah, Hanukkah, Hanukkah. <coughs> okay, and this is something that they read during Hanukkah. In fact, we went through this not too long ago, or I guess it was a little while back, remember? Uh, number 7 to John chapter 7, 753 to 753 from Numbers to John. I think that's a, it would almost seem like it's another clue for us. Here we were, here I've been saying that the reason John chapter 7 in our, in our book that's been open and revealed in the Gospel of John to years, and saying that it doesn't look like it's the actual Feast of Tabernacles, because it says it was the Jews' Feast of Tabernacles. Well, here we are in, John, in Numbers chapter 7, which we've shown has a connection from John 7:53 and you go to number 754 and you see this eighth day you guys remember this and it's the reward of God well who was rewarded Enoch was rewarded remember Enoch was rewarded Hanuk at Hanukkah was rewarded and who's the reward the rock that is God has ransomed that's exactly what we're looking for. And so here in, in the book of Numbers, chapter 7, which we talked about a couple of years ago and has this connection to John chapter 7, John 7 ends at 753, and we come to 754, and it's the eighth day, and Numbers 7 is all about the dedication <clears throat> at the time of Hanukkah, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> it starts it starts to seem uh, okay. I can see what you're saying. Especially for those who have been around since we had the conversation on uh, 754 for numbers. You see it's it's everywhere. <coughs> now, you see the in the reason the the main reason I wanted to show you guys this was so that you guys could see that this dedication that was taking place was for the tabernacle, was so that all of these sacrifices could now begin to take place. And it's connected to Enoch. And so definitely there was an, a type and shadow of a Hanukkah that already existed, and it was all about the dedication of the altar. That's what it was, okay? That's what Tabernacles is. This is what we were looking at. And so knowing this now and, and observing these things a little bit better, <coughs> excuse me, let's go have a look at something we've spoken about many times because we know Luke, Mark, and Matthew now in order. One of those things was when he says tabernacles right let me build let us build three tabernacles here it is and it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings he took peter john and james we all know the story his countenance this is the transfiguration story and 
as we go a little further down into verse 33 it says and it came to pass as as they prepared sorry as they departed from him peter said to unto jesus master it is good for us to be here and let us make three tabernacles see this is one of the reasons at the story of the transfiguration that we were like man tabernacles is really lining up this is tabernacles tabernacles it's lining up but now we're going to look at the wording a little bit closer let us make three tabernacles one for thee one for moses one for elias not knowing what he said i'm sure many of you have read this before and have caught this before and have wondered what it meant i know i was wondering what it meant <clears throat> and what we can see now in looking at this is he's not told that it's not he's not he's not saying it because he's just freaking out he's saying it but he's not aware of what he's saying you know what it sounds like to me it sounds a lot to me like what we've been saying with tabernacles who we are saying you know it's good we're going at tabernacles it's the escape christ is born at tabernacles and all of a sudden these events are taking place the 40 days have begun and this is where Peter would be saying that. However, it says that they that he didn't know what he was saying. You see, it didn't say it was tabernacles. It said not knowing what he said. What would be the difference? Here you are yelling for, for let us do tabernacles, but not knowing what he said. Because in Luke's connection, what are we looking for? Well, when Christ comes at about an eight days, we know that it's connected to when he's coming at his birth and it's going to be the 40 days of the Son of Man beginning. Well, if he was actually born at Hanukkah and Hanukkah is the second tabernacles and Peter not knowing what he's saying was because it wasn't tabernacles but he's blurting this out and unaware of what he's saying they are at a tabernacles they're at the second tabernacles which is again going back to why in john chapter 7 it says it was the jews tabernacles that was at hand just a little that's just a little interesting note and you're going to see why it's interesting and you're going to see how it ties in at the very end when we get to the end of joel that's why this was a this was a great lead in to see how it all ties together because in Luke he didn't know what he was saying <clears throat> so not knowing what he was saying <clears throat> is not telling us that indeed it was tabernacles but not knowing what he was saying meaning he could have thought it was a type of tabernacles you know there there's something there to it Obviously, there has to be, or it wouldn't have been written in Scripture. When we come to Mark, and we see Mark's transfiguration story, listen to what he says here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. For he wist not, it says, wis just means for he knew not, okay? For he knew not what to say for they were sore afraid you see this wording is very different now isn't it this one is saying he, he just didn't know what to say he they were just so terrified he just uh let us build three tabernacles for you meaning it had nothing to do with tabernacles there was no connection to tabernacles it wasn't related to a tabernacles it wasn't that he was confused in in thinking it was the second tabernacles it just says he had no idea what to say. He was terrified and just said it. That's very different, isn't it? It's very different. And that's because the one from Mark will not be connected to any tabernacles whatsoever. Luke's is connected to tabernacles as the second one for Hanukkah. Mark's will have no connection to tabernacles. But what about Matthew's? You're going to see something very interesting in Matthew's portion where it says, uh, da, 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 verse four, 17, verse 4, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, 
and one for Moses, and one for Elias. That's it. That's it. Nothing. No, he was he was terrified and didn't know what to say. None where he was like mistaken in the one he might have thought that it was. There's no there's no saying it's not tabernacles. There's no saying there there's no relation to tabernacles. He's not told anything. We're not told anything leading us to believe that Matthews is saying what? Leading us to believe that what Matthew is telling us is that it is the Feast of Tabernacles. But when is this? Well, as you guys know, this is Matthew's portion. After six days for Matthew. Remember Luke's said about an eight days because the about and eight days means it's in the big picture of 21 years. It's almost the eighth year, which will be the beginning of the first year for seals. <coughs> and when we got to Mark's, it says after six days, which is the type and shadow of six years of seals. So this is when he comes. So when Mark's, what Mark's is saying here after six days or after six years, He's saying it's not tabernacles. He's just so freaked out. Remember, he just blurts it out and not knowing what he's saying. This is just boom. He just says it, meaning it's not going to have anything to do with tabernacles. Luke's about in eight days said that it's it's like he could have thought that it was, but he wasn't sure. Right. He was he was still caught off guard by all of it, but he really wasn't sure. And that's another clue for us to understand that it could be related to Hanukkah because it seemed to be a type of tabernacles, but he didn't know what he was saying in it, okay? And then Matthews. Matthews is then the six years of trumpets to when the Lord returns at the end of the sixth trumpet. And when do you think this is now gonna be? This is going to be tabernacles. You see, this is gonna be tabernacles. This is exactly what we were talking about. We touched on this in the last video. <clears throat> Sorry, give me one second. All right, hopefully I can remember where I'm at. My wife needs her soup, so I'm going to have my son do it. As I was saying earlier, my wife is still in bed, but she's getting there. So please continued prayers for her. So, <clears throat> so what we were talking about here is the one in Matthew is showing that it is tabernacles. There was nothing spoken against it. And what do we know? when the Lord comes at the end of trumpets. He's coming and he's going to remain and be tabernacling with us until the end of the world, okay? Well, <clears throat> when we spoke about this, in fact, I was, I was talking about this with Ivan as well. When we spoke about the menorah recently, okay, even in the last one, I explained to you guys that, look, he's going to do them all in order. You know, when he came and fulfilled Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits, and right to Pentecost, they weren't done um, in reverse. They weren't done with breaks in between. It went, this happened, then this happened, then this happened. It was all from his death and resurrection to the time of the Holy Ghost. But what's going to happen this time is it will be trumpets. <coughs> When he comes at the end of Mark's time, it's going to be trumpets. Okay, remember, <clears throat> excuse me, in Mark 9, remember what we saw from Mark? He, he, he didn't know what to say. It had nothing to do with tabernacles. You're right. It's not going to have anything to do with tabernacles. It's going to be when he comes at trumpets, when he comes at the end of the sixth seal the 144,000 are sealed. The rapture of the great multitude happens. You see, and then it'll be trumpets when he establishes the beginning of trumpets. At the beginning of the trumpet judgments, when, when he's there on heavenly Mount Zion and the city and the streets are about to be rebuilt. This is the beginning of trumpets. And he's coming at that time. He's going to be that king. Remember this? in um daniel chapter 7 daniel chapter 7 when the lord comes see we have the first three beasts what's the first one the lion you're going to see this in a little bit 
the lion. The second one is the bear. This is World War III breaking out. The leopard. That's going to be the, the control center for this beast system taking place. And then, of course, you've got the beast that is going to be about mid-seals. And he's going to rule and reign until the Ancient of Days comes. This is the Lord, the Father, coming down on heavenly Mount Zion. And after the beast, his body is destroyed and given to the burning flame... One like the Son of Man is coming in the clouds of heaven and being brought to the Ancient of Days, and his dominion and glory and kingdom are being given to him. This is when Christ will be established, not for the whole world to see. It's going to be on top of the mountains. Whatever, whatever heavenly Mount Zion is going to look like in the clouds, we saw at the end of the sixth seal that people are freaking out, but it doesn't mean they all see him. Only those who will be going to the rapture. You know, in fact, you can see it in um, Second Ezra, as we've talked about it many times. And see, the, behold, the days are coming when the Most High will deliver those who are on the earth. See, this is the escape of the bride. Then there's bewilderment of mind who those who are left on the earth. War, city against city, people against people. See, World War Three breaks out. Then you've got the events of seals. And then you've got the events of the Lord being seen coming on heavenly Mount Zion place prepared and built and there's going to be a battle <clears throat> this is that first battle once that battle is done here's the 10 tribes the great multitude rapture that's being brought to them that's now going to the lord they're going to see the lord that's the rapture group okay when this happens once this is established the lord as we saw in daniel 7 is now there as the one having been given dominion and his kingdom at the Feast of Trumpets. But do you see what happened? You're going to notice something. <coughs> then we've spoken about atonement. You know, when we spoke about atonement, it's this video again that we generally don't like to talk about. And what is it about? Well, it's the atonement for the Jews. When Christ came and fulfilled the spring feast, he fulfilled it for the house of Israel. And in fulfilling it for the house of Israel, we know at Pentecost, the Gentiles got grafted in because there's so much blending that had taken place between Gentiles and the house of Israel. Well, the fall feasts, this is what we were talking about in the previous video, it's because the fall feasts that are left has nothing to do with us. It's all for Judah. It's all for the house of Judah. And this is when he comes as, as, as the king, as the one leading. This, this whole group now of all these people, it's over. The great multitude will have come in. All of that will be now done. The house of Israel, it is finished. It will now just be the house of Judah. And it's the time of trumpets. You see, like, like I was saying earlier, when he fulfilled this, the spring feast, he did them all in days, like back-to-back -back days. You see? Remember what we were talking about? About an eight days, after six days, after six days. In the story of the ark, we all know it. When the 40 days were over, it was then seven days, and then the dove again, and then seven days. And when it was over, it was the 601st year or 6,001st. But it was days, days. We've been showing for the longest time here in this ministry that these types and shadow of days is a representation of years. D seven more days, seven more years being represented. These th about an eight days is a representation of about the eighth year. Same with the after six for Mark and after six for Matthew. In the end of days, the revelation of what's opened in these understandings is they relate to years. The first time they were days, and he fulfilled all these things within days. But the fall feasts will not be fulfilled in days. He's not going to become the triumphant king, and then five days later, or, or what is it, uh, uh, ten days later, become the atonement for the house of Judah. And then five days after that, become the the one uh tabernacling where he's going to tabernacle with everybody forever 
You see, this helps bring even more, more details again to the proof of what we've been revealed here in this ministry. They were days in the past, just like we show, and we've been showing that these things are meaning years in the is to come, and when Christ fulfills these, they will be over years. He will fulfill this at the beginning of trumpets. He's going to fulfill atonement approximately three and a half years later. And then he's going to fulfill tabernacles when? Exactly. Right where I just showed you when he returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. You see, when he starts trumpets, he's fulfilled seals. He's, he came at the end of the sixth seal. There was that great battle. The 144,000 were sealed. There was that first Gog Magog war, that, that Ezekiel 38 or 39 in particular war that people talk about. We're going to get into that a little bit. <coughs> and then, boom, trumpets begins. You see, if you guys remember, trumpets is Zechariah chapter 8. Here's the Lord now. He was jealous. Now he's there on Mount Zion, heavenly Mount Zion, the mountain of the Lord, the holy mountain. Let your hands be strong. See, you that which were in the day that the foundation of the house of the Lord of hosts was laid, that the temple might be built. For before these days there was no man for hire nor beast, neither was there any peace to him that came in or went out because of what? The affliction. For I, the Lord said, set every man against his neighbor. When is this? The beginning of the Second seven years, this is the beginning of trumpets. That's the Lord now established on heavenly Mount Zion, having dealt with everything that he had to deal with in this seventh year, Sabbath year. So now here he is. Trumpets is beginning. The, the, the trumpet judgments are beginning. The Lord in heavenly Mount Zion are established on the mountains above Jerusalem, whatever that's going to look like. Christ has come to him in the clouds and he's been given his dominion as in king at what? Trumpets. But now we know through the video again and other teachings we've done on it through Leviticus chapter one, that three and a half years later, when Satan is being cast out of heaven, out of the second heaven, having lost that battle in heaven and he's cast down, it'll be mid trumpets at the fifth trumpet. This is when Messiah is going to be cut off, and we've covered it many times. When Messiah is cut off, what's he going to be? He's going to be the bullock, the atoning bullock for Judah. Go read Leviticus chapter 1 from top to bottom, and then go read it in reverse. He was not yet the atoning bullock. He was the atonement for the house of Israel as the lamb, as the unblemished lamb, but he has not yet been the atoning bullock. And that's why Judah, when Christ was here, he didn't come for them. You see, they still have their time of atonement coming. So when is it? Three and a half years later, approximately. When the three and a half years later of his atonement is now taking place, it leaves what? <coughs> it leaves two and a half years. <coughs> Excuse me. It leaves two and a half years to the Lord coming at the end of the sixth trumpet. When he comes at the end of the sixth trumpet, this is Matthew 17 after six years when there's now no discussion about saying that it had nothing to do with tabernacles there's no word against it nothing because why because when he finally comes at that point he's coming at tabernacles what he fulfilled in the spring feasts days the fall feasts are going to be fulfilled over years you see the spring feasts he did not fulfill them during a time of tribulation you see that he fulfilled it with thousands of years with two thousand years for us to prepare and to get ready and 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 to 
to be watching and praying and seeking. <clears throat> the fall feasts, which are for the house of Judah, he has already given them thousands of years. And the last 2,000 years was to make them jealous, to get them more and more jealous. And what do you think is going to make them jealous when tens of millions are about to vanish? And then there's the rapture of the great multitude. They will be crying out like crazy, guys. These are going to be fulfilled over the six years of trumpets. The actual Feast of Tabernacles has nothing to do with us. See how awesome that is? How, did, how, how could we have understood this? Because the open books, because the 14-year the revelation, the fact that it's six in the seventh Sabbath and six in the seventh Sabbath, the fact that Jacob had seven years and then he got his first bride, then another seven years and finally was able to start having children with her, and then he worked six more years for the cattle in the total story <clears throat> was when the 20 years were over, he made a covenant with his father-in-law. It's like the the 13 years with uh, with Ishmael. When, when Abraham has Ishmael, when the 13 years and God made a covenant in the 14th year, the Lord is there, the promise has come. It's, it's like the Gospel of John. Do you know that in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the story of Christ's being taken, his death, and his resurrection are the last three chapters of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, but not of John. In John, it goes 18, 19, 20, and is taking his death and, and his resurrection. Why doesn't it go right to the 21st chapter? The other three did. Why did the resurrection story in John happen in 20? Because it's going to equal the same storyline as all of the others. He's here in that final year. Just like in Zechariah, he's now come feet down on the Mount of Olives. And he's dealing with all who came against Jerusalem. <clears throat> Guys, it's so awesome. You see, and, and so essentially what this is doing is just building from the last video. When the bride escapes, I believe the 28th of November, the 40 days of the Son of Man will begin. It turns out that the 50 equals the Festival of Trees, which is that key piece that we've been looking for, for the 70 years and understanding where the Lord God has been counting this entire time. Now we know it's connected to Leviticus 19. Now we can see these these about in eight days and why it had anything to do with a potential tabernacles. But <clears throat> from tabernacles, why is it that 50 days exactly, sorry, I say tabernacles from, from Hanukkah, why is it that 50 days later is exactly the, uh, uh, the feast, the new year of trees? If everything was about all the trees and when you come into the land, and there had to always be this place where the Lord was counting from. Because guys, we know. We know that it's 14 years. We know that there's a 50 that takes place first. That was given to us by the Spirit of the Lord. We know it. There has got to be a day one of the 14 years of tribulation. There's got to be a day one. This place where the Lord God is counting all of this. And now for the last 10 months, we have understood that it was connected to Leviticus 19, but it wasn't until just recently that we found out that Leviticus 19 is directly connected to the Feast of Trees, the New Year of Trees. And how fitting is it that as we come to find this, we find out that it's connected to Hanukkah, which is connected to Enoch, which is connected to the time of the birth of Christ, and the 40 and 50 days is the exact fit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Guys, be excited because there has to be this start date.
and the scriptures have told us now. Do you know why? Have you guys been getting, have you started to understand why the, the almond tree is so important? Okay. Do you guys remember in the past when we showed seven, 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 and one? Okay. That's because of the almond blossoms <coughs> that are on the menorah. Okay. From Exodus 25. There's seven, right? Six and one, six and one, six and one, and one on its own. This is the story. This is the revelation we have in this ministry. It's the first seven years, which we're at the, we're, we're just about at the end of. <coughs> then you have what? Another seven years. And then you have another seven years. And when it's seven, 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 when it's all done, you have the 22nd year, which is the final Jubilee. <clears throat> it's the image of the menorah. But do you realize that the image of the menorah is made with almond blossoms? <clears throat> Excuse me. It's made with almond blossoms. Do you know that the tree that first blooms at Tuba Shavat is the almond tree. It's the almond tree. I had somebody, our sister Maxine had sent me some info on it. There are there's some intense studies and and tracking that's taken place about the almond tree. Remember, even um, uh, uh, Aaron's rod. It was Moses's rod. It became Aaron's rod. It blossomed almonds. Remember. It's believed that that rod came from the tree of life, that the tree of life was actually an almond tree. And that when they were kicked out of the garden, God gave them, gave Adam a branch of the almond tree and it was a walking stick. And, and it's tracked, uh, the Jews in, in the history and how they track this branch, this almond branch all the way through why do you think aaron's aaron's rod which is the almond branch became aaron's rod ended up in the ark of the uh, in the ark of the covenant you think maybe it's an important tree branch do you see that the menorah itself is is a symbol of what the tree of life well if it's a symbol of the tree of life and it's filled with almond blossoms. Do you think it's safe to say that maybe it was the almond tree that was in the midst that was the tree of life? Now are we understanding why this feast or this festival is now becoming so much more important to us at Tuba Shavat? where Leviticus counted and told us that that um, Leviticus 19 is all about, <clears throat> we have it back here, that Leviticus 19 is the entire story of four years then bringing it to the Lord. What's it all about? It's at the time of the almond tree. The almond tree is, um, is the first thing to, to, to blossom. It's the first thing. Remember, almonds mean watch, right? And in Israel, it is the sign that spring is beginning. It's all almond tree. Almond tree, almond tree, almond tree, the menorah, everything is the almond tree. The connections are the almonds. So the reason I'm bringing this up is we've been tearing our hair out for the last several years always saying lord father god where are you counting from please where is this 50. i know you've confirmed this 50 to us i know you've shown it to us so what are we missing and we were trying to make a 50 count from the spring feast but they were already fulfilled and then we're trying to make a a 50 count from the fall feasts and we're saying, well, if we make a 50 count of the fall feast, it brings us to the end of what was it, like October into early November. 
but it did there there was no there was nothing here suddenly with all of this realization <coughs> and knowing that there was this second tabernacles that john was saying the jews feast of tabernacles that that the story of the transfiguration now can become much more clear and that when we give this 50 day count as the beginning of his birth as luke chapter 2 we say oh my goodness not only is it a perfect 50 day count it's also a date that the lord has been leading us to to the exact count for all the trees and from 1948 this one on january 17th 2022 is the fourth year when that portion is brought to the lord not the bride of christ it's that worker group that anointed worker group that's going to work the first seven years of seals because why there must be a day one there must be a start date brothers and sisters i'm telling you we got it with uh, and and i'll you know what i'll say it with a grain of salt of course because we've all been here before in fact for many of you we're we're in it right now right we're waiting for the next few days but i'm telling you <coughs> go back and count from 1948 understand how they count the feast of trees that they all turn one whether they were a month old six months a day old and then boom in 1949 at the festival of trees that is one 1952 years 1951 is three years 1952 at tuba shavat was the fourth year anniversary when now it was brought to the lord and what the 70 years it works out to about what three years and seven months plus the 70. this is where we're at it cannot go any further and now as you dig into the almond tree and you dig into the the purpose of the festival and and the purpose of leviticus 19 and and the 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 tree of life and the almond blossoms and the menorah everything is in line with it this is why we can continue to be excited right man it's just it's so awesome guys it's so exciting <clears throat> now let's get going here let me jump into the next section i wanted to share with you guys about um joel I've told you guys I wanted to share some things with Joel for a while now because one thing that was really interesting is is in Joel 1 2 3 it, it almost seems like there's a first part a second part and a third part but how to look at it has always been difficult Wh which one is speaking to when you know a lot of people will say well Joel chapter 2 is Acts chapter 2 well, that's not true. You got no, no. Hold on. Let me say this. In the is, it was true. Okay. And here's what I mean by the is there's the was, which is the Old Testament. There's the is, which is from Christ until the day of the escape. So we're still in the is. And then there's the is to come. And this ministry, as you guys all know, is about the is to come. And in the revelation of the is to come, it helps sometimes bring light to the is, and it brings more light to the was. Okay? So in the is, yes, Joel 2 was, as Peter said, I think it was, <clears throat> from Acts 2 relating to Joel 2. But in the is to come, it's not. You're going to see it. Now, Joel 2 is something that we've taught on a number of times in the past. The issue had become, is Joel 1 or Joel 3 the beginning? It was Joel in reverse or is it actually in order going forward? 
And that's what you guys are going to see. And when you see it, just like everything else, you're going to say, oh, there it is. It's crystal clear. It's not difficult to see at all. So we won't take too much time, but I want to spend particular time in chapter three, because when you see it in chapter three, you just say, oh, my goodness, it's so clear. So here we have in Joel chapter one. Uh, starting in verse 2, Hear this, you old men, and give ear, all you inhabitants of the land. Had this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers, tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. Verse 5, Awake, remember, here's how we understand these things. In this ministry, we we have the revelation of the end. We have the revelation of Luke, Mark, Matthew, the the pre, the mid, the post. We understand the wording for those escaping and those who are being left behind. We understand the wording of of Judah and and the, the events that are taking place at that time towards the trumpets portion and going towards the end. Okay. And so we're looking to understand these key words and see how many things jump out at us and that's what reveals to us and then we can dig into it to show that indeed it's whether it's the beginning or the end and so forth and right off the bat right here in joel chapter uh, chapter 1 verse 5 it says awake ye drunkards and weep and howl all you drinkers of wine because of the new wine for it is cut off from your mouth well this is something we can show right off the bat, isn't it? Because we know from Luke's discourse that watch and pray always that you may be accounted to escape all these things. And before it, it says what? Watch this. Right off the bat, we know this from First Thessalonians as well. But in Luke, when we're looking to escape all these things, it starts in verse 30, 21, 34. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with the suffering and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares, because it'll come upon the whole earth unaware. No doubt about it. Tens of millions of people vanishing. That'll be unaware for everybody who who was what? Caught up in the cares of this life. Isn't that more telling now than ever, guys? <clears throat> Isn't that something more than ever taking place right now? So many just saying, just give me the vaccine. Just just give me it so I can go travel. I can go do this. I can go do that. You see, some might not be overcharged with the suffering or the drunkenness, but there may be still a little bit too care caught up in, in, in the cares of this life. That they just want to go back. That the Lord is trying to give so many signs and show everybody, as we were saying in the beginning of the video, that we, we, how many more signs do we need? The only thing we're looking to happen now is just come and get us, Lord. You see, don't we don't want to be caught up in any of these things. But you see, drunkenness is one of those things right off the bat that's that's being spoken about. And in this drunkenness, It's also talking about now the new wine being cut off. Well, where do we see new wine? Of course, it's at at Pentecost. It's when the Holy Ghost comes. Those that are blessed, and it's a time of new wine and so forth. Well, this time it's not going to be a blessing of new wine. Because what's going to happen? At the 50 days, it's the beginning of tribulation, remember? It's 50 days, so it's the escape in the 40, 50 days. And when the 50 days are over, and the 14 years begins, the Holy Ghost will have anointed those seals workers. And what happens? The new wine is cut off. The locusts and the, and the, all the, the pale worm, and the lo- all of the devastation begins. They'll be howling in the streets for wine, remember? That's what it's talking about. This is right off the bat. So this is showing us right here that this is right around the very beginning of the tribulation. It says, For a nation is come upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion. (laughs) 
Hello. And he hath the cheek of a great lion. <clears throat> he hath laid my vine waste and barked my fig tree and hath made clean bare and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. Hello. The lion again. Who's the lion? Without going back to Daniel 7, remember, that's that's the one who's attacking Jerusalem. This is Luke 21. Let's go back to Luke 21. Luke 21's discourse is all about that 40, 50 day period while the Son of Man is here warning. And it begins by saying, as you guys all know, but before all these in Luke 21, verse 12. You see, when it goes nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, that's the bear. That's the red horse rider. That's everybody attacking and everything, all the chaos taking place. And I would say it also includes the lion, but the lion portion is what's going to happen first after that 50 days, that anointing, that new wine time, and then boom, Jerusalem will be attacked. You see, that's why it says it right here in Luke 21, verse 20. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh, meaning not while the Son of Man is here, is here, having been given warning, but the surrounding will be during that time. The devastation of it will happen shortly after. And that's what we're reading about in Joel chapter 1, directly connected to the drunkenness, directly connected to the time of the new wine being cut off, directly connected to when the 50 days are coming to an end and Jerusalem is attacked, the fig tree is being attacked and will be destroyed. It's all directly connected to Luke chapter 21 in that time frame. <clears throat> we can see the famine because the pale worm and so forth. The field, uh, where else? Da -da 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 -da. Joel 1 verse 10, the field is waste, the land mourns, for the corn is waste, the new wine is dried up, the oil languishes for the wheat and for the barley because the harvest in the field is perished. You see, all of these things, all of it's dying. Why? Well, what do we know is part of what's coming in all of this? Famine. Famine is now what's going to follow. All of this is part of the beginning, guys. Joel 1 verse 12, the vine is dried up and the fig tree languishes, the pomegranate, the palm also, and the apple tree, even all the trees. Sound familiar? Sound familiar, Leviticus 19? Even all the trees. When is this portion of all the trees that we're talking about? When is the wine, the new wine that we're talking about? When is the time of the lion attacking that we're talking about? The time of all the trees? Which is called the festival of trees at the 50th anniversary or at the 50th day and the beginning of the 14 years when Jerusalem will be attacked after the 40 days and the Son of Man and that portion is over? You guys remember that? <clears throat> remember this awesome little piece of scripture from uh, from the story of the ark when the 40 days of the Son of Man are over or, or in, in the end, in the is to come that we're talking about? The raven goes out and then the dove, no place for the sole of her feet. So boom, the 50 days come to an end. That, that new wine, that new anointing has taken place and now the wine's going to be cut off. And it says, what? Stayed yet seven other? And boom, this is the beginning of tribulation. The beginning of the seven and seven, the 14 years. That's, that's the same thing that it's talking about right here. The time of all the trees. This blew me away when I read it because here we were talking about this time now with Le Leviticus 19 and all the trees and realizing that all these trees are connected to the festival of trees where it's connected first and foremost to the almond tree which is about the menorah and the tree of life and here we've been trying to understand where the lord god is counting from and now we come to joel to see joel one two three in order and it also at the exact same time where it should be is talking about all the trees and now what's happening to all the trees brothers and sisters 
now it's going to start to wither away because it's tribulation the 14 years will now begin all of this here in joel chapter 1 to this point is all talking about the very beginning now of the 14 years <coughs> um what else joel 1 verse 14 sanctify ye fast call a solemn assembly gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land of the house of god and cry unto the lord alas for the day for the day of the lord is at hand and as a destruction from the almighty shall it come do you remember we say what do you mean a a, a destructing hand, destructive hand from the almighty well, yes, remember what he told us in Zechariah chapter 8? What did he say? We know that at chapter 8, it's the beginning of the eighth year of tribulation. It's the beginning of trumpets. They're there established on heavenly Mount Zion, as we showed, showed earlier. And what did he tell them? He said, before these days, the seven years before these days, there was no man to hire, nor any beast. Neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of the affliction. And what does he say? For I set all men, every one, against his neighbor. He did it. It was the Lord God that allowed all this to take place. <clears throat> you see, it was him that, that brought it about because of disobedience of his people and now you got what the land is laid desolate the lar the the barns are broken down the corn is withered the beasts groan the herds of cattle are perplexed because they have no pasture yea the flocks of sheep are made desolate what does that mean the flocks of sheep are made what they're destroyed they're perishing and dying for the fire hath devoured the pastures of the wilderness. This entire thing of Joel chapter 1 in the is to come is all about the very beginning of tribulation. It's all connected to right around the that 50 days coming to an end. The, the time of all the trees. And the lion showing up, which was that raven spirit. You see, did you see all that was? What did we see? The lion. The lion is that raven spirit. Okay? That's the, I believe it's Assad. It's Syria. It's those coming from the north that are going to bring about this destruction. <coughs> we have the new wine, which is connected to the Holy Ghost. We have all the trees, which is connected to the 50th day. All three of those things I just mentioned are all connected to the very beginning time frame of the 50 days at all the trees and the 14 years beginning. And the Lord allows it to bring them to destruction so that they are removed from the land, as you guys all know, for the next seven years. This Joel chapter one is all about the beginning of the 14 years at that 50th day. Now, what about Joel chapter two? One second here. Oh, I, brothers and sisters, uh, just as a little side note, I have a wonderful gift coming. It's uh, it's this heated hot, uh, um, coffee mug. So awesome. I can't wait to get it. It's this it, it's a it's a really good quality uh, heated coffee mug that uh, it, it's I can't wait. I was reading about it and looking at it and um I'm so excited. I just wanted to mention it. So now my coffees will just remain just a nice, good, warm temperature, and it should go throughout my entire videos. So <laughs> I'm excited about that. Thank you very much. I love it. I'm going to love it. All right, let's continue. So now what happens in Joel chapter 2? Well, Joel chapter 2 has always been an easy one. We, we've been teaching about Joel chapter 2 for probably three years. The difference from Joel chapter 2 to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 is the beginning, this, this time frame that everything's about to start, whereas Joel chapter 2 isn't about the beginning of seals, it's about the end of seals. 
right off the bat, what do we see? Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. So blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Well, when do we know the Lord comes on heavenly Mount Zion? When is he going to be in his holy mountain? Well, at the end of the sixth seal. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble <clears throat> for the day of the Lord cometh. It'll be a dark day upon the mountains. Uh, I don't need to cover everything. Uh, a great people and a strong hath not ever been the like. In fact, okay, let's start in verse 2. A day of darkness and of gloominess, a day of clouds and of thick darkness, as the morning spread upon the mountains, a great people and a strong there hath not ever uh, been ever the like, neither shall any more after it, even to the years of many generations. A fire devours before them, and behind them a flame burns. It is a garden of Eden before them, and behind them is it a, it is a desolate wilderness. <clears throat> uh, their appearance is the horsemen. Uh, their face, the, before the face, the people shall be much pained. Let me show you this in, in Joel chapter 2, verse 6. You know, people's faces, people are freaking out, looking at what's coming. This is the type of thing that we're reading here in, uh, that we've read about in the past in 2 Ezra chapter 13. When we know the escape happened, World War III, the seals, all that craziness takes place. And then the Son of Man is coming. Okay? The Son of Man is coming. And it says, An innumerable multitude shall be gathered together, as you saw, desiring to come to conquer him. But he shall stand on the top of Mount Zion, and Zion will come to be made manifest to all people, prepared and built. This is where the rapture group goes, the great multitude. As you saw, a mountain carved without hands. And my son will reprove the assembled nations for their ungodliness. This is symbolized by the storm. And will reproach them to their face. Uh, what else did it say? When you when you read about this and you go further into details and you can go back even a, a chapter and talk about it. See, it says, And behold, all gathered together against him to wage war with him were much afraid, yet dared to fight. This is the Ezekiel 39 war. <coughs> Excuse me. But you see how they were they were all coming against them. They were they were terrified to come. Okay. Before their face, the people were much pained. All faces shall gather blackness. This is that same time. This is all that time frame now of the end of seals and the Lord coming to bring this destruction upon all those uh, from the, the time of seals, all of the enemies, okay? Though you can say even those who had taken the mark and so forth. It says, neither shall one trust another. They shall walk everyone in his path and they shall fall upon the sword and they shall not be wounded. Those are the ones coming with the Lord. Um, what else do we have? Let's go further down the return of the Lord. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, and call a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, elders gather the children, and those who suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth, uh, go forth of his chamber, and the bride out of her closet. Why? Because that portion is over. You see, gathering the elders and the children and those who, who've survived. That's what this is talking about. Remember in uh, Zechariah, again, going to Zechariah chapter 8. We see that it says, um, uh, da, 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 da. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, There shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem. Every man, the staff in his hand. Kids are going to be playing in the streets, all right? The boys and the girls playing in the streets. This is what's coming when trumpets is then established and they're rebuilding the city and the streets as we spoke about. Back to Joel 2. Um, verse 17. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, 
and give not thine heritage to reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Therefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Okay? Why is this happening? <coughs> because he removed them from the land. You guys all know the story. Those of you guys have been following at least for a little while. We all know the story of Leviticus 26. For the defilement, since they've had the land of Jerusalem, they have not been obedient in how to observe the land and allowing the land to rest its Sabbath year. So what ends up happening, and, and when you understand that having been taught all of our lives, we've only have this, the, the world of church only has this seven-year understanding for, for Judah. They've missed this first seven years, and that's because this first seven years is for the sleeping church, the, the house of Israel, if you will. But it's not only that. The house of Judah <coughs> is going to be kicked out of the land for those seven years. They're going to be removed from Jerusalem. It's going to get destroyed so that the land can observe its rest which they failed to do for the seven years that they've had, the, the, the 50 years that they had it, they've never allowed it to, to rest as he told them to do in his law in Leviticus. And Leviticus said that if you don't do it, this is what's going to happen when, and you're going to be completely devastated and devoured and removed from the land. So now what he's saying in Leviticus, <clears throat> chapter, sorry, in Joel chapter 2, is he's now saying, okay, now, now here I am coming at the end of the sixth seal. For those who are wondering what that means, to be able to see him coming at the end of the sixth seal, all we do is go to the end of the sixth seal. See, great men, bondmen, free rocks fall on us and mountains fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Okay, this is them coming on <coughs> heavenly mount zion <coughs> and the world is freaking out but even though so many of them are freaking out those warriors those that are still coming they're still going to come to fight remember you're going to see how it ties into the uh to the ezekiel battle as well <coughs> so now going back to joel wait where am i joel chapter 2 this is that time frame now that he's coming. Now he's going to have pity on the land. Now he's going to have pity on his people. They've been scattered and his land is resting. Okay? This is what's taking place. This is, this is now the beginning of his return and a battle that's going to take place. And it says, And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen, but I will remove far, uh, far off from you the northern army. Why do you think it's saying the northern army? <clears throat> this all relates to the lion. The lion is who scattered them, who devoured them, and who had them fleeing. They were, it was the attack from the lion and from the north that Luke 21, when you see them surrounded, and then the attack's going to happen at the beginning of the 14 years, that's the time of, of the, the Antichrist spirit. That's the time of them being chased. That's the time of the, the Muslim leadership, <coughs> excuse me, taking over on the earth. Okay. And now he's saying, now I'm going to remove them. <coughs> excuse me. Now I'm going to remove them. All right. Uh, verse 21, fear not, O land. See, fear not, O oh, land. He's like telling his land not to fear anymore. Your land, your, your time of rest is coming up and I will return and we'll be building on it. Be glad and rejoice for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, you beasts of the field. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit and the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, 
for he hath given you the former rain moderately <coughs> and will cause to come down for you uh, the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And listen to this. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall be overflowing, shall overflow with wine and oil. <clears throat> you see? Because why? Why would it suddenly be full of wheat? Because the great multitude rapture is taking place. Okay, this is now what's coming. This is all about him coming at the time of the end of the sixth seal. <clears throat> this is this is the time of Mark's transfiguration story, the after six days as six years. <clears throat> I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, that the cankerworm, the caterpillar, the pale worm, my great army, which I sent among you. And praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. You see, they'll come to realize, <coughs> excuse me, they'll come to realize that all this was done in the will of the Father because of the land and because of their disobedience. And he says that he's dealt wondrously with them. <laughs> How many are actually going to feel that, right? How many are going to think, yeah, it was wonderfully that he dealt with us? You see, it was just love. Everything of the Lord is love. So everything he's done is out of the justice of his love. Always. We've talked about this many times before, right? The tribulation, as crazy, crazy, freaky as it's going to be, it's all in love. Because if it never came about, if it was never going to happen, he would have nobody left to save. More and more people would just fall away and say, hey, life's going to just carry on, I guess, for thousands and thousands, maybe millions of years. Who knows? It must come about. And it must come about in his love. <clears throat> Verse 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and there is none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. You see that? Again, he's telling them right at the end of seals. They know. They're, they're going to realize he's there. There was this battle that's going to take place. He's going to realize it. And there's going to be this, <coughs> whatever Mount Zion is going to look like, in the, in, on top of the mountains in the clouds above Jerusalem. It doesn't mean everybody's going to see God. It doesn't mean everybody's going to see the Messiah. But they're going to be aware that he's there in the midst of them. This is the end of seals. And it shall come after, afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your old men shall dream dreams. And you see, now we get to this part where it sounds very similar to Acts chapter 2. Verse 30, it says, And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. Pay attention to this. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Well, this is Revelation chapter 6. This is the, the sixth seal. Okay? And it's saying that he's going to do these things before his great and terrible day. Meaning, these are going to take place before the very end of the sixth seal when he suddenly shows up. And that's exactly what happens. Because at the end of the sixth seal, after these things have taken place at the sixth seal, and the blood and smoke and all that stuff, then he shows up. And it's going to be a terrible time for the world. A just time, but a terrible time. Remember, it's going to be the, the, the Ezekiel 39 war. <coughs> Listen to what it says. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. 
for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. As the Lord had said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Do you see what's going on here? It is, is deliverance and, and salvation, is all this only going to be right now over in Jerusalem? No, of course not. But remember what happens at the time of the rapture? At the time of the rapture, they're going to be making their way. At the time of the rapture, they're going to Jerusalem. They're going to heavenly Mount Zion that's there in the clouds. That's the great multitude rapture that's going to be there at paradise that he has come down on. <clears throat> now, if you'll notice something very interesting, this is why this is so fascinating here. It says, and it shall come to pass that whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Do you know why that's interesting? Because it's it's an argument that takes place between so many people now. People just say, oh, oh no, no, no. All you got to do is just believe in the Lord. All you do is uh, say, I believe in Jesus and you're good to go. And what do we call those people? We call those people the sleeping church. We call those people those that might believe in jesus they 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 say they believe in jesus they may go to church on occasion but they're not watching seeking the lord and diligently after him they have no idea the season they they may have uh you know give me the vaccine so so that i could still keep going and living my life and be caught up in these things of the world but they know who jesus is you see those people are the ones that are left during the time of seals. That's what we call the sleeping church. That is the great multitude rapture. Some of them may fall away during the time of seals. In fact, I guarantee you, some of them will fall away during the time of seals, but many more will come in. And do you know that at this point <clears throat> where we are reading this is the time of the end of seals? which is as if being at the end of Mark's gospel. And when you're at the end of Mark's gospel, what really is left is only the time of Matthew or Jacob's trouble. Remember what I said at the beginning? If you go into that, that, uh, that intro series or you go read those portions of the book, because we've been taught from a foundation of Matthew, it's as if, everybody believes we're at the end of mark and when you have that type of outlook you only see seven years you think it's the time of the rapture of everybody who claims to believe in christ but that's not the case you have missed the first seven years this is the end of that portion of seals the time when the lord's returning and this is now the time when anybody who will just cry out to the Lord and believe on him <clears throat> will get to go in the great multitude rapture to paradise. They didn't have to be watching and praying and seeking and, and diligent. That was for the bride. That was the pre-trib. You see, we're now at the end of Mark. So those, there will be those who will simply be able to call on the name of the Lord and be delivered in Mount Zion, in Jerusalem, in paradise at the time of the great multitude rapture. That's why the, the thief on the cross, did, did Jesus say, you'll be with me today in the third heaven? No. He said, you'll be with me in paradise. Because he recognized who Christ was in that moment receive the forgiveness and boom he got to go to paradise this is this is exactly this is how important this is this is discerning the timing of scripture this is why they can just call on the lord at this time this is why those that believe in only a seven years and believe that it's the rapture of the whole church that goes first and because all they need to do is call on the lord They've understood that correctly. But unfortunately, it's halfway through the story. 
It is a diligently seeking and loving and obedience with the Lord that comes first. These guys will have made their garments white. And their salvation will be found. Their deliverance, I should say, will be found in paradise above Jerusalem. <clears throat> it's perfect, guys. It's exactly the purpose for the wording. Now, Joel chapter 3. Joel chapter 3 is a lot of fun. I'll try not to spend too much time in it, but you'll definitely see the points. Joel chapter 3, starting in verse 1. For behold, in those days and at that time, shall I bring again the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem. <clears throat> you say, well, wait a second. What do you mean? Why, why would he have to suddenly bring again that captivity? You see? Because we know what happens at mid-trumpets. At mid-trumpets. So after Joel 2, the Lord is there. They're there now at the beginning of trumpets. It's established. And then what happens at mid-trumpets? Satan comes and there's the cutoff. Okay? I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people, for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. Now, when people read this, again, they think because it has the parted land that, it, that it's relating to something at the beginning of tribulation. <clears throat> Look at this. What about having scattered the people? Well, we know that when, let's go to Daniel chapter 12. We know that when Satan is cast down, he's going to rule for time, times, and a half. That's the two and a half years the, uh, at mid-trumpets. So at the three and a half year mark, that's the cutoff. And Satan is going to be here for two and a half years until the end of the sixth trumpet. And what's he going to do? He'll have the, he's going to what? He's going to scatter the holy people. You see? So at the time of cutting off, there's also going to be a scattering of the people. So now if we're looking at this as the end, as his, his coming at the end of the, uh, the end of trumpets, we see that he's going to bring back his people. He, they're going to be his captive. He's bringing his people back under his own captivity. And he's going to gather all those that came against his people. And he's going to plead with them who scattered his people and parted his land at that point of mid-trumpets. Okay? <clears throat> um, what else? It says, uh, see also the children. Da -da 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 -da. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem, you have sold to the Grecians, that they remove them far from their border. Behold, I will raise them out of the place whither you have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabins. Uh, to a people far off, for the Lord hath spoken it. Joel 3, verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat, here it is, check this out. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Now, wait a second. <clears throat> Don't we have scripture that says that they're going to burn their, their spears and do all these things for seven years? Well, now think about it. Remember what happened is Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2 is the, is the time frame at the end of the sixth year of seals. Remember the, the, the vapors of smoke and blood moon and all that stuff that's going to take place before the great and terrible day of the Lord. When then you read the very end after the sixth seal, at the end of the sixth year, and there's the Lord coming and everybody's panicking and freaking out, we know at this point that there's going to be people terrified gathering 
against the Lord here. Well, that, my friends, is the Ezekiel 39 war that is so so often spoken about. And isn't it interesting that all those that believe in a seven year and talk about this Ezekiel 38, 39 war specifically, it's not really 38, it's in 39. <clears throat> but isn't it interesting that those people that believe that the Ezekiel 39 war is what's coming next, isn't it appropriate that it's seven year people teaching it? Because as we've been saying this whole time, it's as if they're at the end of Mark. And if you're at the end of Mark, you're at the end of the sixth seal and you're at the time of what? The Ezekiel 39 war. Remember, they've missed half the story. But look at what happens at the end of this war. Okay, And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers and the bows and the arrows and the hand staves and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years. Now, this is something we've taught on in the past. And I don't know that anybody had before this ministry had ever finally understood or had ever come to the understanding of how the 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 Ezekiel 39 war could end up with all these weapons burning for seven years. <clears throat> how how in a in a seven year tribulation are all the all the the weapons being burned for seven years during a seven year of tribulation of war? You see? That's why most people just read over it. They'll read through it or they'll skip that portion. But this is what I'm going to show you. What is Ezekiel 39? When is Ezekiel 39? Well, look, it's directly tied into the time of the sixth seal. So the end of the sixth seal is the timing of the Ezekiel 39 war. Now, what did it say? It said, including spears and all those things, they're going to be burning them as weapons. <clears throat> but they're going to be burning them with weapons. It's not like, it didn't say for 10 years, for 12 years, for 100 years. No, it said specifically for seven years. Meaning what? Not the beginning of trumpets, but from the seventh year of seals, the Sabbath year rest of seals. They're going to be burning weapons. One, two, three, four, five six seven so the seven years of burning these weapons will be done at the end of the sixth year of trumpet this is really important because if you guys remember <clears throat> in luke chapter 20 no not 22 is it maybe 22 it's it's one of my favorite little oh yeah there it is it's one of my favorite little stories that if you don't understand, it has you scratching your head and saying, what? You guys remember this? Um, it says, uh, and when he sent, when I sent you without purse, uh, verse 22, verse 36 of Luke. Then said he unto them, but now he that hath a purse, let him take it and likewise his script. And he that has no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. So he's talking to this group of them there, right? And it says, For I say unto you that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors, transgressors for the things concerning me have an end. And behold, uh, and they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords and he said unto them it is enough <laughs> what 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 on earth does that mean he told all of you guys to go get a sword he finishes his conversation you turn to each other and like you got a sword uh, i don't got one you got one hey uh steve you got one right hey uh hey there you you got a sword okay yeah we got two swords hey lord we got two swords how's this I know you told all of us, you know, go sell what we get and we all need one. But hey, we've got two of them right here. And then the Lord's like, yeah, OK, that's good. You see, we understand this and we've talked about this many times in the videos. 
But the story on its surface without the understanding is absolutely hilarious. He <laughs> just like, what the heck? Are, are these guys, are, are these guys, are they slow? Like, what don't they get? He said all of them to get it. But then why is Jesus affirming it by telling them it's okay if you've got two, that's enough? The answer is the two swords, the one for the end of seals and the one for the end of trumpets. Okay? It's the Lord's two battles that he's going to have. When he comes at the end of the sixth seal, just like it said with this group here, they're afraid, they're fearing to come and fight against them, but they know they're going to come and fight no matter how afraid they are because this is that Ezekiel war. <coughs> that Ezekiel 39 war, and it's the one that happens at the end of the sixth seal, the great and terrible day of the Lord. That's the purpose of that one. And you see, then it says that they're going to be burning all these things and the spears and everything, and they're going to burn it for seven years. Well, seven years later is the seventh year of seals is one, plus the six of trumpets for a total of seven, meaning at the end of the sixth year of trumpet, of trumpets, when the Lord returns feet down on the Mount of Olives, there's now time for another battle. That's exactly what we read in Zechariah chapter 14. It's exactly what we read in 14. That's why it was only seven years and not 10 or 20 or five or three, but it was for seven years they'd be burning it. Because from the Lord's return and destroying all those that came against them, now you have the 144,000 sealed in the seventh year. You have the rapture of the great multitude. You have the peace deal made that the Lord made makes with all nations. He's here for three and a half years. And then, of course, Satan's time comes. There's not all this fighting with weapons and wars and all that. That's already been dealt with. Until the Lord returns. And we'll get into that in a moment. That leads us into... Um, that leads us into... Zechariah chapter 14. So we can see why it's only seven years. And the, the portion of being scattered and this being brought into the valley, you'll see it in a moment. It's clearly at the end of the tribulation, at the end of trumpets. Um, it says, uh, Joel chapter 3, verse starting verse 4 in the middle of it. And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, I will return your recompense upon your own head because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into your temples my goodly and pleasant things. Well, when do you think they're going to be taking the Lord's silver and his gold and everything out of the temple? Well, you got it. They will be doing it at the time of mid trumpets for the two and a half years while Satan's here. They'll be taking it out, doing, destroying it, and everything else. Okay? Um, let's see. Move them far from their borders. Sabins, mighty men, draw near. <clears throat> okay. This is back. So in verse 9 again, when he says in verse 10, so he's getting the mighty men ready. Uh, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. See, there's the spears again. But he's saying that, you're, you're taking the pruning hooks and turning them into spears. When we go into Micah chapter 4, you guys all know this scripture. It had told us the opposite. It said, And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. And nation shall not lift up a sword against nation. <clears throat> so clearly, there's something going on. One is saying, hey, go ahead and, and beat them into plowshares. And the other one is saying, turn them back into weapons. Did you see that? Turn them back into weapons is what Joel chapter 3 is saying. So at the end of seals... At the end of that Gog battle, uh, that uh, Ezekiel 9, 39 battle, <clears throat> this is now, 
the seven years. They, they burnt them. They, they turned them into plowshares. But now seven years are over. And it's saying, I need the mighty men to now come up. And I need you to turn those plowshares back into swords. And those pruning hooks back into spears. Assemble yourselves and come, all you heathen, and gather together round about. Tither, cause thy mighty ones to come down. And the, let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. And there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put ye in the sickle, <coughs> for the harvest is ripe. Come, get down, for the press is full and the fats overflowing. Hello. That's not a mystery for us to understand. This is at the end of trumpets, is it? Go to Revelation chapter 14. We all know this story. We've shared how Revelation 14 chapter 7 is this final end portion time. And then 8 is the beginning of the 14 years, right? Like about in eight days. Then chapter, then verse nine. It's almost like the, the verses are a year in these events that are taking place. We've spoken about this not too long ago. Then it talks about putting in the sickle, uh, talks about reaping, grabbing, gather the cluster. So in Revelation uh, 14, verse 18, about halfway through, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth for her grapes are fully ripe, and the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came up to the wine uh, of the winepress unto the horse's girdle. See, when is this happening? When is this happening? In the twentieth year, in the, in the shadow of a verse to years when is it right here right when the lord returns at the end of the sixth trumpet when he comes at the end of the 20th year the sixth trumpet it's the same time frame so at the end of 13 is just like saying the beginning of 14 it's a difference of that day right <coughs> and so when we go back to joel now and we look at this wording and we see suddenly that he's telling them to turn these things back into weapons. And that when these things are turned into weapons, it's about this battle and the wine press being full. Well, when we go to Zechariah chapter 14, which is the beginning of the 14th year, like I said, the end of the 13th, or you could say the beginning of the 14th year, listen to what it says. I will gather together, sorry, I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. And the city shall be taken, and the houses rift with women, ravished. Half the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. I'm not going to go into it right now, but you see half the city shall go into captivity. The other half will stay. I believe that's your foolish and wise virgins, by the way. That's your 50-50 thing going on. <clears throat> but that's a side story. And now listen to this. Verse, uh, Zechariah 14, verse 3. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. Well, what do you think that is? Here he is now fighting this time of the wine press and it's going to be crushed and everything else. When was the first one? When was the first battle? The Joel 2, the end of the sixth seal. Then you had the seven years of the, of the turning them uh, the, into, into pruning hooks. And now he says, turn those pruning hooks back into spears. Because why? Because now it's the time of the second sword like Luke 22. It's the time of the second sword, the second and final battle that's going to take place. And this is the one that's going to be crushing them where the blood is going to come up to the girdle of the horse. <clears throat> you see, this is exactly what's taking place. The mountain shall cleave from one side unto the other, 
Uh, let's see what it says. There was another piece here. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there there shall be one Lord and his name one turned up to the plan. Da, 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 da. Verse 11, Zechariah 14, 11. And men shall dwell in it, and there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. There was one more piece I wanted to make sure I got to. Okay, yeah. Um, and this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand on their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. Verse 14, listen to this. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem. You see that? It's not only God consuming them where they're standing. Judah, who will have been brought back into captivity, the Lord's captivity, this, this again as he said he would do, because now he's returned feet down on the Mount of Olives. Now he's coming for that second battle. He's brought his people to him again. <coughs> and they're also going to fight. You see, if we didn't have that in Joel chapter 3 to let us know that, hey, those, those, those spears that were turned into pruning hooks, I want you guys now, because seven years are over for that, I need you to turn them back into spears. Because you guys are now going to fight for your city with me. You see that? And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem. And the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver, and apparel in great abundance. Remember the gold and silver? That's what we were just talking about. In Joel chapter, was it Joel chapter three as well? Because they had taken the land, they had taken his gold and have taken his silver. And that might have been in another portion that we were reading about it. But they had taken the gold. They had taken the silver now. And this is why we're seeing these men being prepared. The Lord gathering together gathering together again. And that it's the time of the wine press. Crystal clear when he comes at the end of the sixth trumpet. Uh, Joel 3, verse 14, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw from, from shining. The Lord shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake, and the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of his children. Uh, and the strength of the children of Jerusalem. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God, dwelling in Zion in my holy mountain. Then Jerusalem shall be holy, and there shall no stranger pass through her any more. See, it's over. No more stranger will be passing through Jerusalem any more ever again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the mountains shall draw up new wine and the hills shall flow with milk and all the rivers of Judah shall flow with waters and a fountain shall come forth from the house of the Lord and shall water the valley of, of Shittim. Now, if that rings a bell too, it should ring a bell because as we've been saying, this is what? This is now at the end. He's had that final battle. Now at the end of that final battle, what's going to take place? The Lord has returned. Now it's going to be established in Jerusalem. No more strangers are going to come wandering their way through. And water is going to flow from the temple of the Lord. That conversation is exactly the end of Ezekiel. <coughs> or Ezekiel starting in 47. Because why? 47 is that time frame of the 14th year, and the Jubilee is when they get all their land. Well, the Lord's going to restore the land. He's going to refresh and renew, revive the land that's been so destroyed, and then they're going to receive their inheritance. You see, you go to Ezekiel 47 and look at what it says right off the bat. 
Afterward, he brought me again unto the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward, for the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under, from the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. You see, water is now flowing from the temple at the exact timing, at the exact portion of conversation connected to Joel chapter 3. <clears throat> but it even gets better because we're even told this conversation in Zechariah chapter 14. Uh, what does it say? Da -da 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 -da. Somewhere here in Zechariah 14, and men shall dwell there safely. Uh, they're going to fight at Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all nations shall come against Jerusalem and shall even go up year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and keep the feasts of tabernacles. Uh, and if they don't, there shall be no rain and so forth. There was another piece uh, that I wanted to share. It was somewhere here. Uh, here oh, here it is. Verse 8. And it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem. Hello. It's the exact same thing. Look at this timing. This is Zechariah chapter 14. Ezekiel chapter 47. Water flowing and coming from the, 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 the house of the Lord. At the end, after that second battle, it's, it's the same timing. It's Joel 1, 2, 3. It is Joel 1, 2, 3 is in order. It's all exactly where it should be. It's so exciting. I love doing these studies and just digging and spending time just going through it and finding these connections and confirming these connections and seeing where they all are. It's amazing to understand. <clears throat> it's, it's all right there. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for the Lord dwelleth in Zion. Boom, it's all over. You see? And then we say, well, Ezekiel chapter 48 is the timing of that final jubilee. That's exactly correct. You go into Ezekiel 48, the end of 48, after everything had been cleansed now, the battle had taken place, the cleansing and the water flowing from the house of the Lord. And what happens? Boom, the tribes now each get the border to their border to their border to their border. And the story is over. And remember how I said it would all connect and tie back together? <clears throat> well, did you see what happened? You see what happened <coughs> in this final year? They all come. The Lord is now what? Actually, if we go to Matthew 28, the very end of the Gospels, we find out that the Lord tells them, you're now going to be teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. We've taught on this, the end of of Luke, Mark, and Matthew. Because why? He's now going to be with them until the end of the millennial reign. Meaning he is now tabernacling with men until the end of the world. Beginning of trumpets, he is as king and there being given his dominion at atonement when he's cut off as, as, the, as the ox, as the bullock, as the atoning bullock for Judah to when he returns for that second and final battle. And when it's all over and the waters flow and the land is fully renewed, they are now all going to be what? He's going to be with them until the end of the world. <clears throat> and they're all told that they will tabernacle with him as well. Right here, when all nations that are remaining, that are left on the earth, they will now come up year after year and keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Why? 
because he has now come and is the fulfillment of tabernacles. The menorah, everything is over, and he is tabernacling with the world until the end of the world. Brothers and sisters, I pray this has been a blessing to you. I pray that that we're, you could feel it, that I'm, I'm back into it, man. I, I'm so happy after two weeks, I wasn't even studying. Your mind just gets so so weak you're 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 just you don't want to do anything <clears throat> and so i'm excited to be back keep praying for us we're still getting our strength um especially boost your prayers for my wife please continue to to join us to support us continue to lift each other up and know that the time is so near at hand even if this week comes and goes know that we are here that we have understood it know that we are that chosen generation that for some reason we have been chosen to see it we've been chosen to understand it and that we have known this is the time and now we are at the door of it brothers and sisters because as i've said in the past the only thing that will make this any different than at any other point in all of human history is the vanishing of tens of millions of people without that it's just going to be another war without that it's just going to be world war three it must all begin with a vanishing of those who are his those who were diligently seeking him believing he was who he said he was and is who he says he is they will be taken out they will vanish they will be translated as enoch was and as one little final thing i haven't read it in a long in a in quite a while let's go to our beautiful second corinthians chapter 12 verse 2 I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. This is the 50, then the 14 years to the final Jubilee. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, whether out of the body, I cannot tell, God knows. L such as one or like a rapture to the third heaven. Brothers and sisters, this is what is about to happen. This year, 2021, I believe it is Hanukkah, that evening before Hanukkah, this is the time of the Bride of Christ because it is the above 14 years ago. We are here, brothers and sisters. Be strengthened, be patient, and let's keep lifting each other up. Let's keep praying for each other. And prayerfully in the next video we'll do a gathering together um of anybody who wants to join can come and join we'll do a, a zoom meeting maybe we'll do uh, a, um, a, 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 a communion uh that was a request somebody had but i wanted to get this out i wanted to get my juices flowing again and cover a number of things that i had told you guys uh, that I was that I had been working on that I've been planning and that I wanted to share with you guys So I pray that blesses you guys. I love you I thank you so much for all of your prayers for me and my family and please keep them coming And we will see you very soon and know that we're praying for you and yours as well. God bless you. God bless your families. Bye for now